Happy Friday, everybody. It's Ruthie Albrand and Ruthie Rocks, and it is show 697. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. Let's see what's going on in our market today. Uh, I know there's only 20, two days left of Christmas, so I'm panicked. Our Christmas party is tonight for the office. I'm even more panicked, so here I am, though. <laughs> we have 27 days of inventory. Now, we lost a day, but I think perhaps some listings must have expired and people said we're going to wait or they didn't, they took them off the market for the holidays. Normally, I mean, that's normal, but I think probably things will increase um, as we uh, progress through the month, but we'll see. Now, last year we, um, in December, um, you know, we were around 102, 105 homes sold a day. This, this, this uh, and that was years, the year, but, this December so far, now this is only the two days of closings, 126. And I think if you look back on the previous months, it does increase as the month, uh, as we get more into the month. The uh, last year we were at 184. I'm not sure why that was so high. Um, and it really doesn't matter because I think this number is going to go up anyway. The non-owner occupies are still going about 45 a day. And uh, we closed 114 yesterday, put 84 under contract and listed 103. So everything is just kind of bouncing along. And uh, so we won't belabor this today so that we can get on with our show today. So I'm going to hide that. And I just want to talk a little bit about the Zillow off, the Zillow report that just came out at six o'clock this morning. Zillow close to unloading more than half of its iBuyer homes. So interestingly enough, the um, uh, now they're based in Seattle. I'm going to read what the news says because I didn't. Uh, I, I don't know if I can articulate it enough. Hi Debbie from Advantage Realty, and hi Frank. Good to see you. Um, so here we go. Um, so in mid-November, news outlets reported that Zillow, the listing giant, they called him, uh, had struck an agreement to sell 2,000 of its homes to New York City investment firm Premium Partners, which had a portfolio of 70,000 single family homes, uh, which were rentals across 20 markets. Okay. So on Thursday, a Zillow spokesman uh, said that none of the other 7,000 plus homes dealt with so far were sold to in institutional investors, but rather sold traditionally, except for 400 whose contract Zillow canceled earlier this week. Now, the the uh, pre, the, pre, the pre, Pretium sale had prompted some scrutiny. So the U.S. Congress got involved with this, and they said the Senator, Senator Sherrod Brown and Tina Smith and Jack Reed sent Zillow a letter raising serious concerns about Zillow's plan to dispose of its properties to institutional investors. Given, listen to this, the government's getting into our business big time. Given the for sale inventory shortage across the nation, Brown is chair of the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs, and Smith is the chair of the Senate Subcommittee on Housing, Transportation, and Community Development. So an analysis by Bloomberg, that's a business uh, a company, found that Zillow and I buying rivals open door and offer pad have sold more than 20% of their homes to institutional investors so far this year. So these large scale property sales have the potential to destabilize local real estate markets and leave local buyers with few affordable options for buying a home. And that was what the senators wrote. Troublingly, these types of sales have the ability to concentrate property ownership in the hands of a few corporate driven, out of town landlords with little meaningful connection to communities. So moreover, the senators highlighted concerns about how Pretnium and its affiliates manage their properties. So now they're getting into this national uh, investor and how they manage their properties. Now, what could that mean? Good morning, Karen. Good to see you. Good to see you. That could mean that maybe they're not keeping them maintained. Who knows? I guess more will follow on that. So residents have reported flooding issues, 
vermin infestations, and other unsafe conditions in homes managed by Pretium's property arms. And they wrote, additionally, they have reported that Pretium's managers are often unresponsive and that tenants frequently face payment difficulties or seemingly predatory billing practices. And they added that in at least some areas of the country, these harms have been concentrated in communities of color, exasperating longstanding inequities and limiting home buying opportunities. Guys, this is really, this is really something. The Senator said that the testimony at a recent hearing before the committee suggested such practices and their impacts are widespread among institutional investor rental companies and local markets in which they have a significant footprint. So let's think about that for just a second. So, so the government is saying, Hey, we have a housing shortage. People can't buy houses, but institutions can. No, it's not fair. They're saying that's not fair, fair housing, right? We're into fair housing. Then they did, dug deeper into Pretium's management company and found out that they're not even managing those properties properly and that they are really discriminating against um, people of color and eth ethnic and I can't say the word, ethnicity. So the letter also said to Zillow, provide the number of iBuyer properties it intends to sell and list their location and the price paid to acquire the property. Describe the steps, if any, you, Zillow, you take to sell the remaining iBuyer properties to individuals or community-focused for nonprofit companies. Say how many properties that you have sold to individual buyers, community-focused nonprofits, and institutional investors since January 1st of 2020, and the number of units sold to each. And then include it included in the letter, they said to Zillow, say whether you intend to allow buyers a first look opportunity to buy properties. Similar to programs offered by Federal Housing Administration, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So Zillow's spokesperson confirmed to Inman, Inman News that the company had responded to the sentence letter, but declined to provide the details. The company declined to say whether it intended to allow local buyers the first chance to buy its properties. So they basically said to the government, no, we're not doing it. We're just not doing it. So Zillow made the decision to, to shutter the offers, the Zillow offers after the company made more purchases than intended and at high market prices. Well, they did that themselves. And, it, and just like, I mean, I still, if you all remember, TikTok, TikTok, right? Sean said, Hmm. Is there a company out there price fixing for their own benefit so they can up the prices so that when they go to sell their their homes that they're making more money because they've established the higher priced market? That's that's still under scrutiny. Homes were sitting on the market for longer and starting to sell for a loss more often. And that was their Zillow's. The company cited problems with the ability of the algorithms to accurately predict future home prices and supply chain issues behind its decision. Well, um, Zillow updated its fourth quarter outlook, upping its expectations for revenues from its home segment to a range of 2.3 billion to 2.9 billion compared to the previous forecast from 1.7 to 2.1. Go figure. Zillow probably earned 750 million on the Predium deal, signing a note from analysts at, at Berenberg Capital Markets. We are pleased with the significant Zillow offers inventory wind down progress we've made in such a short time, uh, said the Zillow CFO. We will, we will continue to be disciplined in our inventory wind down strategy and evaluate a variety of options to best optimize our cash flows to our company. Well, um, we will follow this and see what happens. Uh, because the federal government is involved. And Zillow is facing also two class action lawsuits brought by shareholder plaintiffs, Diberka Barua and Steven Silverberg, alleging the company committed securities fraud by misleading investors about the company's business and prospects. Well, if you haven't in the news, uh, I, I'll just post this uh, so you can read the whole thing uh, and refer to it. Trouble in River City, huh? <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. 
what goes around comes around, something like that. Let's let's uh, talk now. Let's talk about 2022. Yesterday we had Courtney on stage telling us about social media content building, how you take that content and you can spread it over many platforms, dice it, slice it 30 different ways. So we're going to continue today. And she's talking about reels today. And I, for one, have not gotten into reels. I mean, I only have so many hours in a day. And so I just said, okay, I'm going to eliminate that. But next year, I am probably going to hire somebody to take my content because at least I'm creating content. And I'm sure you all are too, right? Right? At least tell me right. Uh, and then you can get somebody else to slice it and dice it because you've created it. So the slicing and dicing to me is more of a logistical thing and to get you out there where you need to be. All right, everybody, let me go and get this. Let's see, we're going to share this screen. Whoops, cancel that. Um, I'm so excited about Zillow, huh? Okay, uh, we will get on with this. We're going to kind of, uh, I went back maybe a minute from yesterday, but uh, yeah, let's get started here. And I have to mix. So I'm going to mute myself, turn her on, and away. We'll on on this video on the right hand side, I have over forty thousand likes, and that's all organic. I've spent no money on this page. It's completely nothing. It's no sponsored, and I've been able to do this through reels. So. That's where I'm going to segment into why you should heavily, heavily be focusing on reels. Um, I've also included what to look for in reels. As you can see on the left-hand side, I've kind of circled this arrow that's shooting up, and that's where it goes into following the trends. When you see this arrow that's shooting up on the left-hand bottom side, that means the song is trending. That's something that you want to hop onto because that means that there are going to be a lot of videos and a lot of people posting because they like that sound. So when you're looking at reels, always look for sounds that have those arrows pointing up. I know you there are certain songs that you want to use because you think it flows well, but trust me, find these songs that have the arrows pointing up and you can adjust your videos to fit the trend for it. And I want to get to know So this was a trend that people were hopping on of like dogs that have they found somewhere or that families backed out on them. And so sadly, I tweaked my story a little bit. North did not have a terrible family before she found us, but she did have a family that backed out on her. And that's why we ended up getting her. So it still fits into the trend. And what do you know? That video now has over 900,000 views, um, and that's just because of using the trending sound. So going into getting real with your reels. So what kind of content should you be creating on reels or posting on reels that would be different from a normal video post on Instagram? You're going to want to use those videos that are the behind the scenes, the being 100% real, telling your story, user generated content. Um, what I do with Tom is when Tom's on stage or he's doing other things, I record everything. Tom having interactions with you guys, Tom talking to Cynthia, our VP of marketing, Tom having conversations with um, someone else because I know that I can then later on a sound for reels will be perfect with that. The sound trending could be, you know, talking to a friend or playing some Toy Story song and I could be like, oh, this would fit perfect with that video of Tom talking with Cynthia. And there you go, there's your content. You don't have to schedule or plan out the content to post for Reels. This is just showing you guys the results that I've had on my dog's channel, that I've had zero promotions, um, but I've reached over a million accounts, or a million, yeah, accounts in over 90 days. Um, within six or 90 days, I've gotten over 12,000 followers. And this is all based off of solely reels so should they if they're definitely afraid mm -hmm. create a fake account about their dog create a fake account about parks in their name like so so they're the dog they're, selling they're, real estate the dog selling real estate <laughs> right so they so they can test that yeah and then figure out what works themselves and then go implement it on their own page or they should be crazy like me and just jump in and do well, it the thing i would i would just jump in and do it you don't want them to spend too much time creating dog accounts and stuff like this is 
for me fun on the side, you know, but yeah. they want to put it into their business right away. Right. So start testing what your audience likes. Do they yes. like you being behind the scenes? Do they like you going on listing appointments? Like what do they like? So I want to be clear because this is so like this is you have moved the needle. Like we're talking like millions and millions of views like in like 30 days. Like people are like like Jason Pantano. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like what yeah. is she doing? It's insane. So just so I'm clear, write this in your notes. Do you all know where the reels button is on Instagram? They know. OK, I just want to make sure. <laughs> OK, second thing. This is what I, this is what I'm hearing. Short form. Anything goes. It doesn't matter. Video me jumping off the stage we, like yeah. that. <laughs> Perfect. Could be a moment on reels. Yes. Me grabbing my row, my little oar, <laughs> and doing this across the way yeah. could be a really great reel, but yeah. only if you add a trending song. Yeah. Only if you add a trending song. And where do they find the trending songs again? You're just you can either type in Google top trending sounds for November 2021. Right. Or you can just scroll through your Reels page, and usually it's like every third one is going to be a trending sound. Right. So yeah. then you, does the trending song have to be heard? No, you can even lower the volume on it. Oh, so I don't even have to hear the song, just have the song playing behind the scenes. Yeah. And that's going to get me more views. Then what's the third one? The text? I, but the text would help with SEO, like on that on my dog's page, like I kind of spelled out the lyrics. Mm -hmm. So just kind of help out with SEO a little bit. Okay. All right. Yeah. Does everybody got that? Good. So everyone has to do a reel tonight and tag me in it. Yay! How do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Okay. So everyone's got to do so, a reel tonight and you got to tag me in it. I'll be watching late and I will be sharing if they have really good reels or they just did it. Then okay. I'll be sharing it and getting you more followers. Keep so going. Someone's also saying, how do I add text to videos? That's directly in the platform on Instagram. So you can edit, add sound, add all of that stuff directly in the platform. Where? What do I look for? In the reels, it's just going to be a text. It says A. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Uppercase A, lowercase A. Yeah. Top um, right corner. Yeah. Now, this is just showing a little bit more of like the numbers, all of that kind of stuff from just purely organic stuff um, posted on reels using the trending sounds. And now I want you guys to take out your phones and go on to your Instagram platform because these are going to be the top five accounts I want you guys to follow right away. Today. Today, yeah. They are, the first one would be Adam Masseri. He's the head of Instagram. He always posts videos, usually weekly, talking about how to get verified, what should you be focusing on on Instagram. Like, he kind of lays out everything for you. Um, and the next one is at creators. These are the creators of Instagram. So the people that work behind the scenes at Instagram will post the trends and things that are happening on Instagram on this page. So this is a really good one to post or to follow. The next one would be Social Media Examiner. Uh, they have a conference every year and they just talk about everything social media, blogs, um, what to hire, who to hire, all of that. Um, I would also follow TikTok on Instagram because a lot of the TikTok trends then segue into Instagram. So you kind of want to be ahead of the curve. And on Instagram or on TikTok's Instagram, they post all of those trends and things to look out for. And then Hootsuite, which is a social media management tool. They have a lot of really cool like graphics that you can swipe through, um, talking about things to either post content about, what to focus on. Um, so these are like my top social media accounts to follow on Instagram. It would be Masseri, which is Adam Masseri, creators, um, at Social Media Examiner, SM Examiner, at TikTok, and then at Hootsuite. So now moving into Facebook, which is now called Meta, which I'm sure you guys saw starting December 1st. Um, it's very interesting, though, because I guess they use the same logo as a meditation app. So they're having some issues there. But I am kind of want to talk to you about why you should be posting on Facebook. And Facebook is not dead. Um, it's something you should still be regularly posting content on because it boosts your SEO. It builds reputation, social proof, um, and also for the community aspect of it through Facebook groups. Um, I think that Facebook groups is something that each of you guys should have. We have Facebook groups for all of our coaching clients. And in there, people are able to do referrals or just have questions. Um, if you were to create a Facebook group for your community, let's say it's 
at Rancho Santa Margarita. And let's say you own that page, you're the admin, and, and you post community updates or things that are happening in your city would be amazing. I would love if a real estate agent I knew in my community had a Facebook group that I could go there and it would say, hey, just letting you guys know there's a trink, uh, truck or treat for kids at this school or hey, did you guys know that there's a bakery doing this, this, and this? Like, you want to be that go-to agent, that go-to person that people want for updates in your city. So I think Facebook groups is something you guys should all be creating for your community. These are just a few stats talking about why you should be on Facebook. It's the most, you know, visited third world, or third most visited website aside from Google or YouTube. 80% of Facebook users only use that platform on mobile devices. So keep in mind when you're creating your content that it's good for mobile devices. Um, that also includes Instagram, all the others. And um, over 500 million people use Facebook daily. So when I was talking about using Reels on Instagram and now Facebook has them, you should also be segmenting it into Facebook. This is what Tom was talking about with buckets of content. So what kind of content should you be creating? Um, for Tom, we have different buckets that things will fall into. So we have a mindset bucket, and that's all of his Mindset Mondays, the quote cards, anything that's built around mindset. We also have a team, so talking about team members, um, people within the organization, that's a bucket of content. We also have Q&A, which actually just became its own bucket of content. That's where Tom answers a lot of questions on his Instagram stories. And what's great about this Q&A section is we're able to hear from the audience directly what people want to hear and see, and that's where we can build further content from. So I would recommend using your Q&A section on Instagram a lot more often than you do now. Another one you could have is education, like Tom was talking about, the marketplace stuff. Everything education would be a good bucket to have, family, community, lifestyle. But this is kind of where you start when you start building your content, is you're looking for it to fit into this bucket. Um, so you're not just aimlessly posting things. I know for a fact we have all of our mindset content goes into here. We have a podcast one, we have shows, and then we have family. So these are just kind of examples that you guys can use when bucketing your content. This is just a, another screenshot from Facebook to just kind of reiterate best times to post, why you should be using Facebook still, that Facebook's not dead, um, and really using it to its full advantage along with Instagram. Hold on. So you're saying uh, best times to post. Does this go back to why Gain or Hootsuite, et cetera, are so important? So yeah. you don't have to go, stop everything, it's 9 o'clock, I'm supposed to post something, but mm -hmm. instead you auto-program things to be posted yeah. at the opportune times to get yeah. the greatest lift. Is everybody following this? Yeah. Right? Don't complain that you're not getting as many likes or you're not getting as many hearts or comments or shares. You have to play to the algorithm, the timing game. Yeah. For a good example too is Tom moved to Dallas and so the time change is different, right? So we're now posting stuff at 3 a.m. because mm -hmm. Tom would usually wake up at 5 a.m. Pacific time, but now that's 3 a.m. Central yeah. and that's when it performs best is yep. during those times. So we have content going out at 3 a.m., 8 a.m., but all central time now. Because mm -hmm. when we looked into our insights, we started to notice that a lot of his followers were on central time, not Pacific time. Okay, so I know I'm interrupting your talk just a tad here. I have like one more slide. Okay, I know, it. but let's have everybody, wait, Gary, give me your last slide, and this then I want to do a little tutorial. Oh, you're going to go into insights. This was my last slide okay. talking about. So tell them. So this is why <laughs> consistency, testing, tracking matters. Yeah. I started working at Tom Ferry in April 2019. This is what his Facebook numbers were at. He had 185,000 followers. His engagement was around 24,000. Reach 286,000 and impressions 395. October, so last month, we're now at 303,000, over 303,000 followers. Good I job. actually looked today yeah. and it's 306. So within a month, Good we got job. a little bit more. Yeah. Engagements, 140, over 143,000. Okay, okay, just everyone just look at that. So engagements, 24,000, which that sounds like an enormous number. So if that was 240 for you, mm -hmm. or it was 2,400 for you, she did get from 2,400 to, you know, 1,443, mm -hmm. right? All by doing all the things you've discussed so far. Yeah. Everything is designed to get them more views, more yeah. likes, more comments, more shares. 
ultimately more trust so they get more business, yes? Exactly. And all of these numbers that I pull, I know that you guys see our ads all the time, our paid stuff, like yep. Tom inviting you to Blueprint, Tom inviting you to do all this stuff. This is all organic traffic. I work solely on organic, so I have no spend. I don't spend mm -hmm. any money. So this is all of his organic stuff. Um, any impressions are over a million, but just this slide is just to let you guys know that it is possible for yeah. you guys to do it. If you need help, then that's where you hire a marketing coordinator, or social media coordinator, yep. and you can find people on LinkedIn. I mean, it's now a job description fully, right. you know? Right. And if you need help with paid, that's different. If you need help with organic, that's different. But it's just letting you know that it's possible. Yes. I showed you my dog's account that I was able to do it with zero dollars and on Tom's account with nothing. So social media platforms may change, but building relationships doesn't. Ooh, nice and line. <laughs> nice line. All right. So thank okay. you guys. So um, so first of all, do you all get some value out of this? I hope right? so. Okay. Love it, love it, love it. So so first of all, should they follow you or do you want a bunch of realtors following you? They can follow me. I have my handle. It's at on Instagram is at Courtney period Gracia G R A C I A. Yep, I would I would strongly recommend it because you also put out a lot of content like you're teaching people, you're educating yeah. people. Here's five things you do. Here's four things. Like she spends, I don't want to make up the time, an hour a day looking at what's trending, what works, what doesn't, reading Probably all these more different, than that. right? It's, it's like similar to you. Like you get all of these newsletters in the uh -huh. morning, and then that's what you read throughout the right. day. You know, right? So so. so Tomorrow, with all of our coaching clients, you're going to show them how to hire a social media coordinator. A um, marketing coordinator. Marketing yeah. coordinator. Okay. So for all my coaching clients tomorrow, you'll get that on the playback uh, inside of a loom. That'll be your third show you've done. Yeah. You're kind of becoming famous. No. <laughs> no. What are you talking about? No, I'm I've not. already did a reel about you. All of you need to go no, to no, my no, no, Instagram no. page. I did a reel <laughs> no. on Courtney with a cat over here and a cat over no. here. So please, like, oh you know, heart it up, like it up, and embarrass her. Oh, my gosh. All right. Stop. So closing, closing thoughts. Um, most important thing they need to know, understand, and do, like, how do they get right into action? What do you want them to do tonight? Because uh, we're almost done. I think it's finding what buckets of content. Because you need to start there. Because if you just jump right yeah. into reels, you're kind of aimlessly going around trying to figure out what your buckets are. Right. You need to have your buckets of content and then start creating for those buckets. Right. So it's like, what are the themes of my life and business? I've got my family. I've got real estate market updates, yeah. but you could have about town. Yeah. If you're a foodie, restaurants. Yeah. If you just did a trending song with the three hot new restaurants and you just went in front of it and went eh, one, two, three, and put yeah. it to a trending song and tagged each one of the restaurants, oh, yeah. that would blow up. Yeah. Another thing too is like, don't delete your stuff right away. If you have 300 views, wait, like it will play its way out. Just right. let it happen. You yep. know, um, another good example is I follow this guy on YouTube and he talking all about like Denver Colorado stuff uh -huh. but he talks about like the top three neighborhoods to live in or like the top three schools um, oh yeah he talks about uh, places to eat um, mm -hmm. why this neighborhood wouldn't be good for X like so it's oh, like videos yeah. that make you want to watch like oh why wouldn't Tell this me more. be good right. for me right you know that actually makes an interesting bucket idea for all them I would have we should do a top three yeah top three this top three that top oh, yeah, three I this like top three that we should let's add that I like that okay all yeah. right, I got enough value. That was no. good. Okay, I can leave now. <laughs> gotta go. All right, so let's give Courtney but a giant round of applause again. Girl, no. First time oh, really you. on stage oh, rocking so it. <laughs>
get your buckets. So I think over the weekend, everybody think of your buckets, think of what you're going to use for your buckets and go to Instagram and follow those five people, those five, uh, yeah, Instagram accounts. And it was Masseri. I hope you wrote them down. Creators, uh, uh, SME Examiner, uh, TikTok, and Hootsuite. And I'll put those, um, I'll put those, not today, because I got to go get ready for my Christmas party. But over the weekend, I'll put some of those slides uh, on the uh, group so that, you know, it. Uh, so you have something easy to see. I do have our slides and I will post the stats for today. Uh, nothing great going on with them. Tomorrow, uh, we have a guest and uh, it's a it's a rising star realtor. She's got lots of uh, ideas about how she went from one deal a month to three deals a month in two years. And that's at nine o'clock tomorrow morning with Marketing Max. And you all have a great day. Um, you know, hey, if you're in the area, 8400 West Sahara from 3.30 to 6.30, we got a photo booth. We got live music. We got food. Stop in. You're all invited. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye-bye.